Hey there, on today's video we're going to be covering another really important topic, object selection. We'll smooth out the whole process and speed up your workflow, coming right up. So I know a lot of CAD programs can seem really intimidating with the number of commands that there are, and Rhino is certainly no exception, but I like to think of all 3D modeling as basically two fundamental operations, selecting stuff and doing things to that stuff. If I can master selection, I'm kind of 50% of the way there. So the most basic way to select an object in Rhino is simply by left-clicking on it. You probably already know this. You can also add to or subtract from selection using Shift or Control. Note that I've also got my keyboard and mouse input overlaid up here in the top left corner so you can follow along with my keyboard shortcuts and mouse clicks. So if I have an initial selection, if I hold Shift and continue clicking, I add to my selection. If I hold Control and click, I can subtract from it. I can also select multiple objects using what is known as a window or a crossing selection. If I click and drag from left to right, I get a solid line rectangle, and this is a window selection. If I release the mouse, anything that sits completely inside the boundary that I just defined on screen becomes selected. You'll notice that the handrail did not get selected because the entire handrail didn't sit inside the rectangle I drew. On the other hand, I can make a crossing selection. If I click from right and move to the left, I get a dashed line selection. This is a crossing selection. When I release the mouse, anything that sits completely inside the rectangle or that crosses the boundary of the rectangle becomes selected. Like with single clicks, I can combine window and crossing selections with shift and control to add or subtract items. So I can make an initial selection, hold control, and modify that selection with window and crossing selections. If I try and use a window or crossing selection that starts over existing geometry, I end up dragging that geometry instead. To toggle this behavior, you can use the Alt key. If I hold Alt, I get my normal as expected window selection. I can use Alt in combination with Shift and Control to continue adding or subtracting from my selection as well. It might seem difficult at first to remember all these key combinations and toggles, but try and think of it as like developing your modeling muscle memory. Trust me, the speed you'll gain in the end will all be worth it. So one issue that a lot of beginning Rhino users encounter is one where two objects will be very close to one another, and when you go to select them, if you're not careful about where you're choosing to select them, you get the selection menu that pops up, and you can cycle through all the objects Rhino might think you mean to select. And while this isn't the worst thing in the world, it's annoying and it certainly does slow things down, so we want to avoid it as much as possible. You can do this a couple ways. One is by making sure you're not selecting near the boundaries between things as much as you can. Uh, this is easier said than done sometimes, so just do your best. Um, another thing is that uh, a lot of people tend to like, especially in the design world, modeling in ghosted mode. And ghosted mode is great for being able to see through things and kind of get a overall understanding of the model. But one thing it does complicate is selection because whereas before in shaded mode, if I had clicked this window, I would just get the window. Now Rhino doesn't know what thing I mean in the depth of the model. So it can be very challenging to uh, consistently select the right things in my model. So. When I'm modeling, I like to model as much as possible in shaded mode and control visibility of certain elements of my model, either through layers or individual visibility uh, by object. Um, and those are some topics we can cover in another video. Um, but um, I find them to be much more effective in the long run than trying to model always in ghosted mode and constantly running into this issue of object selection. So in addition to the selection methods we've seen using the mouse and keyboard shortcuts, Rhino also offers a whole host of selection commands that make selecting objects much easier. If I start typing SEL, short for select, into the command line, I can see an alphabetical listing of all these selection commands. A slightly easier way to view these is to go to Edit and to Select Objects. 
and here we see a list of these commands uh, more or less organized by type. Now there's way too many to go into detail on every single one in this video, but I would like to cover the general hierarchy of these. So we have selection by uh, geometry type, such as points, lines, polylines, surfaces, polysurfaces, and so on. We also have special geometries like lights, dimensions, text, hatches, basically any object type you can imagine. Rhino has a way to select it. In addition, we can select by layer, by color, by object name, any property that you can assign to an object, you can probably also use to select that object by. Some interesting ones you can find in here in area and volume selection. We have lasso for sort of Photoshop style lasso selections. We can select things that are under a certain size with small objects. We can even select things that are within a certain distance from a curve with pipe or with from a point with box, sphere. We have lots of these options available to us. Like I mentioned, too many to go to in any one video, but if you guys have any questions about these selection types, please be sure to put them in the comments below. One last method of selection that can be useful is invert. Invert functions a lot like the invert selection in Photoshop or Illustrator if you're familiar with that. When I take invert, whatever I have that is selected becomes deselected, and whatever was previously deselected becomes selected. Let's see how this works. So let's say I selected all of these framing members over here, and I wanted to select everything in my model except for them. I just type invert, and that's selected. So that covers most of the commands for selection. So how do we maximize them? Well, as you're modeling, I like to recommend you think of a selection strategy each time you go to make a selection, whether that's selecting a bunch of things and individually deselecting objects, whether that's using the commands to select certain object types, whether that means selecting a small amount of objects and inverting the selection to get everything else, you'll come up with a number of strategies over time and develop a sense and an instinct for how to make selections quickly. So if you found today's video helpful, do me a favor and give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like it. Also, if you have friends or coworkers who you think would enjoy, please share it with them. And last, if you have ideas for specific videos that you'd like to see in the future, please recommend them in the comments below. I'll catch you next time. Happy modeling. Thank you.